Samantha Ray's fingers trembled as she traced the ancient runes etched into the stone altar. Their arcane symbols glowing faintly in the flickering candlelight of the coven's inner sanctum. A chill crept down her spine, raising goose flesh on her bare arms despite the black velvet cloak draped over her shoulders. The visions had been growing stronger, more insistent, invading her dreams until they bled into her waking hours. Visions of a figure cloaked in shadow, eyes burning red as coals, hands wreathed in crackling dark energy. Visions of her own face, twisted in anguish and streaked with tears as she knelt before him. Her brother, the other half of her soul, ripped away when they were just children, his existence erased from the coven's history like a smudge of ink wiped clean. But Samantha never forgot. Could never forget the way his small hand clutched hers as they huddled in the darkness, listening to the screams of their parents as the coven elders dragged them away. Now, after years of searching, of honing her craft in secret, while the coven elders watched her every move, she finally had the key to unlocking the truth. The prophecy, whispered by the dying breath of an ancient seer, spoke of a warlock rising to claim an evil power sealed away centuries ago. A warlock born under the blood moon, bearing the mark of the raven. Just like the birthmark stark against her own pale skin, hidden beneath the folds of her cloak. Samantha. Dot. She whirled at the sound of her name, heart in her throat. A man emerged from the shadows, tall and lean, his raven dark hair falling over a high brow and eyes the piercing blue of a winter sky. Rowan Blackthorn, her rival since childhood, the thorn in her side with his quick tongue and infuriating smirk. And yet, the sight of him now sent a totally different shiver through her, warming her blood like the finest fire whiskey. You shouldn't be here, she breathed, hand tightening on her wand. If the elders find you, they won't. Rowan held up an amulet etched with runes that made her eyes ache to look at too long. A cloaking spell, keyed to your magical signature. It's how I've been following you these past weeks. Samantha's hackles rose. You've been spying on me? Watching over you, he corrected, something flaring in those winter blue eyes. Waiting for you to uncover the truth, so I could offer my aid. Why? Suspicion sharpened her voice. What's in it for you? Rowan's smile held no humor. Let's just say we have a common enemy. The warlock in your visions. He nodded to the altar behind her. He murdered my family when I was a boy. Left me an orphan to be raised by the coven, molded into a weapon. Samantha's heart clenched. She knew that pain, that loss, the rage that simmered beneath the skin, waiting to be unleashed. Rowan? She reached for him instinctively. He caught her hand in his, calluses scraping her palm as he held on tight. I won't let him rise, Samantha. Won't let him claim that evil power he sought to wield against the world. Against you. His gaze bored into hers. Because he didn't just murder my parents. He was there that night when the coven elders came for your family. It was on his orders that they... No, Samantha cut him off, wrenching away. No, my parents died in a ritual gone wrong. An accident. The elders said... Rowan's laugh was a jagged thing. You, of all people, should know the elders lie. She closed her eyes against the sting of tears, against the small voice rising in the back of her mind. Because she did know, had always known, deep down in the darkest corners of her heart, that there was more to the story. More to that night that left her an orphan, severed from her twin soul. Why me? Her voice cracked as she opened her eyes to meet Rowan's once more. Why my family? Yours is an ancient bloodline, descended from the first witches. The first warlocks. He glanced past her to the altar, something like reverence flickering across his angular features. It's in your very blood, Samantha. The key to undoing the binding spells that imprison the ancient evil. He sought to claim that power through you. Samantha shook her head slowly, understanding settling cold and leaden in her gut. And now that he has my brother? He'll stop at nothing to have you both. To complete the ritual on the blood moon and un unleash his full might on this world. Rowan's grip tightened on her hand, grounding her. Unless we stop him first. 
We. The word rang through her, a clarion call, a warning and a promise all at once. She raised her eyes to Rowan's, seeing her own resolve mirrored there, her own fury, her own grief-forged determination, and beneath it all, the spark of something else, something that had always simmered between them, buried beneath the weight of duty and the coven's watchful eyes. She squeezed his hand, feeling his pulse leap beneath her fingertips. What do I need to do? Rowan's smile flashed fierce and bright as he pressed something into her palm, a silver amulet, twin to the one around his neck. For now, a run, dite. As if on cue, shouts erupted from beyond the sanctum doors, the thud of running feet and the clatter of blades being drawn. The elders, alerted to an intruder in their midst, Rowan threw up his free hand, muttering an incantation that made the runes on his amulet flare white hot. The door shuddered under an impact, but held. For now. Go, Rowan urged, releasing her hand to shove at her shoulder. I'll hold them off. I'm not leaving you. Samantha planted her feet, lifting her own hand to erect a shimmering shield as the doors groaned again. Rowan rounded on her, eyes blazing. This isn't up for debate. You need to get to safety. Need to find your brother before the prophecy unfolds. I can't do this without you. The confession fell from her lips unbidden, laid bare and raw between them. For a heartbeat, Rowan's face softened, his knuckles grazing her cheek in a featherlight caress. You won't have to. I'll find you. I promise. Then he was turning away, drawing a blade wreathed in blue flame from the sheath at his belt facing the splintering doors with shoulders squared and head high. The Rowan she knew. The boy she'd secretly admired. The man she... No. She couldn't think about that now. Blinking back tears, Samantha turned and fled, his amulet clenched tight in her fist. As she plunged into the shadows, she heard the sanctum doors finally give way with a thunderous boom. Heard Ruin's defiant roar rise to meet the elder's shouts. Heard her own heart shatter anew, even as it hardened with grim purpose. Find her brother. Break the curse. Finish this, once and for all. Samantha's lungs burned as she raced through the twisting corridors of the coven's underground labyrinth, Rowan's amulet clutched so tightly in her fist that its edges bit into her palm. Behind her, the sounds of pursuit echoed off the damp stone walls, the pounding of boots, the clank of armor, the crackle of magic unleashed. But she dared not look back, dared not think about Rowan facing down the elders alone, buying her the precious seconds she needed to escape. To find her brother and stop the prophecy before it was too late. Hot tears blurred her vision, but she blinked them furiously away. She couldn't afford weakness now. Couldn't afford the luxury of grief, of fear, of the aching chasm that yawned in her chest at the thought of Rowan sacrificing himself for her. He had promised to find her, promised that she wouldn't have to do this alone. And Rowan Blackthorn always kept his promises. Shouts rose behind her, closer now. A bolt of crackling energy slammed into the wall inches from her head, showering her in dust and debris. Gritting her teeth, Samantha poured on a burst of speed, her cloak tangling around her legs as she rounded a corner, and plowed straight into a tall, cloaked figure. Strong hands grasped her shoulders, keeping her from tumbling to the ground. For a split second, hope surged in her chest. Rowan, dot. But as she raised her head, she found herself staring into eyes as black as obsidian, set in a face as familiar as her own. Hello, sister. His voice was deep, cultured, with an undercurrent of dark amusement that sent chills racing down her spine. This was not the boy she remembered, the other half of her heart. This was a stranger, radiating a power that made her teeth ache and her bones feel like they were vibrating apart. Finn, she breathed, barely recognizing the sound of her own voice. What? How? Shh. He pressed a finger to her lips, and she tasted ozone bitter and metallic on her tongue. There's no time. The elders are almost upon us. As if to punctuate his words, 
Another blast of magic exploded against the wall behind her, closer this time. Finn's eyes flashed, and he muttered a word that made the air ripple and shimmer around them, distorting their figures like heat rising from summer pavement. A uh, glamour. The realization settled cold in Samantha's gut. He was hiding them from the elders, but why? What game was he playing? Come. Finn's hand closed over her wrist, his grip just shy of bruising as he tugged her down the corridor. We have to get you out of here. No. Samantha dug in her heels, wrenching against his hold. Not until you tell me what's going on. Where have you been all these years? Why did you leave me? The words tore from her throat, jagged and raw with a decade's worth of longing and loss and betrayal. Finn stilled, his shoulders rigid beneath the folds of his dark cloak. I had no choice. His voice was hollow, almost robotic. It was the only way to keep you safe. To keep them from using you like they used me. <sighs> the elders? Finn's laugh was a broken, bitter thing. The elders are nothing but puppets, dancing on strings pulled by a far greater power. He turned to face her, and in the flickering witchlight, his eyes seemed to glow red. A power I now wield. I slithered through Samantha's veins. The prophecy. The dark warlock rising to claim an ancient evil. Finn, what have you done? What I had to. He released her wrist to cup her face, his thumbs brushing over her cheekbones in a perverse mockery of tenderness. And now, dear sister, it's time for you to take your rightful place at my side. Comprehension crashed over Samantha in a freezing wave. No. She shook her head wildly, trying to pull away, but Finn's grip only tightened. I won't help you unleash that evil on the world. I won't be party to more death and destruction. You misunderstand. Finn's voice dropped to a croon, insidious and seductive. I don't want to destroy the world. I want to rule it. And I want you with me, as it always should have been. Tears spilled hot over Samantha's cheeks, even as resolution hardened in her chest. The brother I loved would never ask this of me. Her hand drifted to the wand at her hip, fingers curling around its smooth ebony handle. And I will never bow to a tyrant. Even if he wears my twin's face. Finn's eyes narrowed, his expression shifting from coaxing to coldly furious in the space of a heartbeat. Foolish girl. You have no idea the power I now command. Power that could be yours. If only you would open your eyes and embrace your true nature. Blue-black energy crackled around his clenched fists, raising the hairs on the back of Samantha's neck. In the distance, she could hear the renewed shouts of the elders as they closed in, could feel the wards around them starting to buckle and strain beneath the onslaught. They were out of time. Meeting her brother's fathomless gaze, Samantha let grief and rage and bitter, clawing love surge through her, fueling her magic until it thrummed beneath her skin like a second heartbeat. My true nature, she gritted out, raising her wand in a white-knuckled grip, is to protect the innocent, to stand against darkness, no matter the face it wears. Finn's snarl was barely human and told her all she needed to know about the thing that had once been her other half, her soulmate. Then you will fall, he hissed, like all the rest who stand in my way. Choking on a sob, Samantha slashed her wand through the air, unleashing a blast of searing silver light. It caught Finn full in the chest, hurling him back against the far wall with a sickening crunch. But even as he slid to the floor in a crumpled heap, dark laughter bubbled from his lips, echoing obscenely off the stone. Run, little sister, he crooned, bloody foam speckling his chin as he grinned up at her. Run and hide, like the frightened child you are. But know this, you cannot escape your destiny. Cannot outrun the blood that binds us. Bile burned the back of Samantha's throat, but she swallowed it down, letting Rowan's amulet bite into her palm as she gathered the tattered remains of her magic around her like a shield. Watch me, she whispered. Then, with a crack of displaced air and a whirl of velvet skirts, she spun on her heel and vanished, leaving her brother's mad laughter ringing in her ears like the tolling of a funeral bell. Here is the middle act part two.
Act 2B. Continuing from the end of Act 2AA, Samantha rematerialized in a whirl of magic and desperation, stumbling as her feet hit the uneven ground. Icy wind lashed at her face, whipping her cloak around her legs and stinging her tear-raw cheeks. She blinked, trying to orient herself, but all she could see was a sea of white snow stretching out in every direction, broken only by the jagged black peaks of mountains stabbing at a leaden sky. The Whispering Peaks The place where she and Finn used to play as children, pretending to be great heroes battling imaginary monsters. The place she had always felt safest, most connected to her magic and to the other half of her soul. Now, it felt like a graveyard. A monument to innocence lost and bonds shattered beyond repair. Samantha's knees gave out, sending her crashing to the frozen ground. Sobs tore from her throat, raw and wretched, as she curled in on herself, heedless of the snow seeping through her clothes and numbing her skin. She couldn't stop shaking, couldn't stop seeing Finn's face twisted in gleeful malice, couldn't stop hearing his laughter ringing in her ears. Her brother, her twin, her other half, lost to darkness. Lost to a hunger for power that had consumed everything good and true in him, leaving only a shell filled with cruelty and madness. And she had failed him, Failed to protect him, to save him, to keep the promise they had made all those years ago, huddled together in the dark, as the coven tore their family apart. The promise to always be there for each other, no matter what. Dimly, through the haze of grief and guilt, Samantha became aware of a warmth emanating from her clenched fist. Blinking snow from her lashes, she uncurled her fingers to reveal Rowan's amulet, pulsing with a gentle silver light. As she watched, the light resolved into a spectral figure, transparent and shot through with stardust. Rowan's voice drifted to her as if from a great distance, strained and urgent. Samantha! Where are you? Are you safe? A fresh sob hitched in Samantha's chest. She wasn't safe. Would never be safe again, with her brother hunting her and the weight of the prophecy bearing down on her like a millstone around her neck. But she couldn't lay that burden on Rowan. Couldn't risk him any more than she already had. I'm fine, she forced out, the lie bitter as blood on her tongue. I got away. Even in spectral form, she could see Rowan's brow furrow, could feel the weight of his piercing gaze. And your brother? Samantha squeezed her eyes shut, fresh tears scalding her frozen cheeks. Lost to me, bombs to me. Lost to the darkness he wields like a weapon. Rowan was silent for a long moment. Then, softly, I'm so sorry, Samantha. I can't imagine the pain you must be feeling. But there was an undercurrent to his words. A knowing sort of sorrow that made Samantha's eyes fly open. You knew, she whispered, sudden certainty crystallizing in her chest. You knew what he had become. Rowan's spectral form flickered his expression a mask of regret. I suspected, he admitted heavily. The signs were there for those who knew how to read them. The whispers of a dark power rising in the east, the rumblings of ancient evils stirring in their sleep. He met her gaze, and even through the ethereal glow, she could see the pain in his winter blue eyes. I had hoped I was wrong. For your sake, if nothing else. Samantha shook her head slowly, betrayal a dull, throbbing ache beneath her breastbone. Why didn't you tell me? Would you have believed me? Rowan's smile was sad, resigned. He was your twin, Samantha. Your other half. To suggest he might be anything other than the boy you remembered, the brother you loved, it would have shattered you. And I couldn't bear to be the one to do that. He was right. The realization settled over Samantha like a shroud, heavy and suffocating. If Rowan had come to her with his suspicions, she would have railed against him, accused him of jealousy, of trying to poison her against her own flesh and blood. She had needed to see the truth for herself, as much as it had broken her to do so. Rowan, she began, her voice cracking on his name. I'm none and you. Don't. He cut her off gently, his spectral hand hovering just above her cheek, as if aching to touch, to comfort. You have nothing to apologize for, Samantha. Nothing to blame yourself for. The choices your brother made were his, and his alone. 
His words were like a blade to the tangled knot of self-loathing in her chest, painful but precise. Necessary. Because he was right. As much as it gutted her to admit, the sweet, brave boy Finn had been was gone, devoured by the darkness he had invited into his heart, until all that remained was a hollow shell hungry for power. And it was that hunger that would destroy the world if she didn't find a way to stop him. The prophecy, she said, rising shakily to her feet. Snow clung to her skirts, to the wild tangle of her hair, but she paid it no mind. He means to fulfill it, Rowan. To unleash the ancient evil and bend it to his will. Rowan's spectral form pulsed with grim resolve. Then we will stop him. Together. As we always have. Something warm and fierce kindled in Samantha's chest, thawing the ice that had taken root in her marrow. Rowan, her friend, her rival, her North Star. The one person who had always seen her, challenged her, believed in her, even when she couldn't believe in herself. How do I find you? She asked, curling her fingers around his amulet like a lifeline. The elders are the least of our concerns now. Rowan's smile flashed, quick and sharp as a blade. Let me worry about the coven. You must focus on unraveling the prophecy, on finding a way to counter your brother's power. His image began to flicker and fade, his voice distorting as if carried off by the wind. Go to the place where the blood moon rises, where the veil between worlds runs thin. Seek the truth carved in ancient stone, and the power that sleeps within your bones. I will find you, Samantha. I swear it on all that I am. Samantha opened her mouth to reply, but he was already gone, his amulet cooling in her grasp. For a moment, she simply stood there, staring at the spot where his spectral form had been. Then, slowly, she raised her head to the sky, to the mountains looming like ancient sentinels. The place where the blood moon rises. She knew with a sudden bone-deep certainty where she had to go. The place that had haunted her dreams since she was a child, since the night her family was ripped asunder. The Blackthorn Crypt. The resting place of her ancestors and the dark secrets they had taken to their graves. Secrets that whispered to her now, a siren song in her blood, in her very marrow. Secrets that might hold the key to saving her brother's soul, or destroying it, once and for all. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha tightened her grip on Rowan's amulet, and turned her face into the biting wind. One step, then another, her boots crunching through the snow as she forged a path into the unknown. The Blackthorn Crypt loomed before Samantha, a mausoleum of black marble and gothic spires that seemed to pierce the very heart of the blood-red moon hanging low in the night sky. Shadows danced along the crypt's facade, cast by the flickering light of the torches that lined the winding path to its iron-bound doors. Torches that burned with an eerie, unnatural blue flame. Samantha's breath caught in her throat, her heart a wild, fluttering thing beneath her breastbone. She knew that flame had seen it wreathing her brother's fists as he hurled her against the wall of the coven's labyrinth. It was the flame of dark magic, of power twisted to nefarious purpose. The flame of a soul consumed by its own hunger. Stealing herself, Samantha began to climb the path, Rowan's amulet a comforting weight around her neck. With each step, she could feel the ancient magic of this place rising to meet her, whispering across her skin like the brush of invisible fingers. It recognized her, this magic. Recognized the blackthorn blood flowing through her veins, the power that had slumbered in her bones since the day she was born. The same power that now sang in Finn's, a siren song of seduction and destruction. At the thought of her brother, a fresh wave of grief and determination crashed over Samantha, tightening her throat and prickling behind her eyes. She had come here for him, to this place where it had all begun, where the darkest secrets of their lineage lay buried. She would save him, or she would end him, even if it shattered her soul to do so. Even if it cost her everything she was. The doors of the crypt swung open before her, soundless on their ancient hinges. Beyond them a cavernous chamber awaited, its walls lined with the tombs of generations of blackthorns. And there, in the center of it all, stood Finn. 
He was a silhouette against the red moonlight filtering through the stained glass window behind him, his cloak billowing in an unseen wind. In his hands he cradled an orb that pulsed with the same sickly blue light as the torches outside, casting his sharp features in ghostly relief. You came. His voice echoed in the sepulchral stillness, a dark, velvet purr that raised the hairs on the back of Samantha's neck. I knew you would. You never could resist a mystery, dear sister. Samantha's fingers twitched toward her wand, but she forced them to stillness at her side. This isn't a game, Finn. The power you're playing with, the ancient evil you seek to unleash, it will consume you. Destroy everything and everyone you once held dear. Finn tilted his head, his smile a flash of white in the dimness. You mean it will destroy you? He tutted, a mockery of sympathy. Is that what you fear, Samantha? Losing me? Or losing yourself to the darkness you've denied for so long? He began to circle her, his footsteps a whisper against the stone. Samantha turned with him, never letting him leave her sight, even as his words burrowed beneath her skin like poison, like a corruption she could feel in the very marrow of her bones. Because there was truth in what he said, loath as she was to admit it. She had always felt the pull of the darker magics, the allure of power unchecked, by morality or mercy. It was the Blackthorn curse, the shadow side of the gift that ran in their blood. But she had chosen to embrace the light, to use her magic for good, for protection and healing. She had built her life on that choice, had become a beacon of hope in a world too often shrouded in darkness. And she would not let her brother drag her down into the abyss. Not without a fight. I'm not afraid of the dark, Finn. Samantha's voice rang out, clear and strong in the silence of the crypt. I'm afraid of what it's doing to you. Of how far you've fallen from the boy I once knew, the brother I loved. Something flickered in Finn's eyes, there and gone too quickly to decipher. But his smile only widened, sharpening at the edges. Love, he scoffed. A weakness, a shackle I have long since cast off. As you will too, sister, once you embrace your true potential. He held out his hand, the orb pulsing faster, brighter, in his palm. Join me, Samantha. Claim your birthright your place at my side as we reshape this world in our image. In the image of the Blackthorns, as it was always meant to be. For a heartbeat, Samantha wavered. Because there was a part of her, buried deep, that yearned for what he offered. The freedom of power without restraint, without the constant struggle against the whispers in her blood. The chance to be with her brother again, united as they had been in the womb, in the innocent days of their childhood. But then she thought of Rowan, of his unwavering faith in her, in the goodness he saw in her heart. She thought of her parents, who had died to protect her from this very fate. She thought of the innocent lives that would be lost, the world that would crumble, if she gave in to the darkness that even now licked at the edges of her soul. And she knew, with a clarity as sharp as broken glass, that she could not, would not, betray all that she was, all that she had fought to become not even for the other half of her own soul. No, Finn. Samantha took a step back, shaking her head even as her heart cracked and bled in her chest. I will not abandon my principles, my very self, for power. For anything. And I will not let you do this, even if it means. What? Finn's smile turned ugly, twisting his beautiful face into something cruel and unrecognizable. Even if it means destroying me? Is that what you'll tell yourself when the deed is done? When my blood stains your hands and my screams echo in your dreams? He laughed, and the sound was like nails down the chalkboard of Samantha's spine. You can't do it. You're too weak, too soft, too ruled by sentiment and morality. His hand tightened on the orb, blue veins throbbing in his temples as he began to chant, in a language dead long, before their ancestors ever laid the first stone of this crypt. And Samantha felt it, the stirring of something vast and ancient and hungry beneath the flagstones, an evil straining toward the summons in her brother's voice, toward the promised feast of a world drowned in blood and anguish. The orb in Finn's hand began to throb faster, 
pulsing in time with Samantha's own thundering heart. She could feel the malevolent energy pouring off of it, a cold, oily tide that threatened to pull her under, to drown her in despair and dread. But in its foul depths, she could also see the glimmer of something else, something achingly familiar. A small, scared boy with wide green eyes and a quavering smile, reaching for her hand in the dark. The ghost of the brother she had loved, the innocent who had never asked for the curse that now ate him alive from the inside out. The brother she had sworn to protect, to save, even from himself. Tears blurred Samantha's vision as she raised her wand, the worn ebony thrumming in her grasp like a living thing, an extension of her own will and magic. She sighted down its length at the orb in Finn's hand, at the dark heart of the power he sought to unleash, at the only weakness in the armor of his madness and malice. I'm sorry, she whispered, and with those words she poured everything into her spell, her love, her grief, her desperate, clawing hope. It burst from her wand in a blaze of searing silver light, a lance of purest magic that pierced the orb like an arrow loosed from a bow. For a split second, the world seemed to hold its breath. Then, with a sound like a thousand mirrors shattering, the orb exploded, and all hell broke loose. Dark energy erupted in a maelstrom of howling wind and jagged blue lightning, throwing Samantha back against the wall of the crypt. Stone cracked behind her, showering her in dust and pulverized mortar, but she barely felt it, barely registered anything beyond the sight of Finn, writhing at the center of the storm, his screams swallowed by the eldritch shrieks of the evil being torn from this world by the unmaking of its vessel. And there, in the heart of the chaos, Samantha saw it again, the flicker of the boy Finn had been, the soul not yet wholly lost to shadow. With a cry that was equal parts anguish and determination, she surged forward, fighting through the malevolent energies that tore at her hair and clothes, that seared her skin and choked her lungs. She would not let him face this alone, would not let the darkness claim him without a fight. Hand outstretched, she reached for her brother, pouring all that was left of her strength, her magic, her very essence into one final, desperate plea. Finn! Take my hand. For a moment that seemed to stretch into eternity, Finn stared at her, his face a mask of torment and confusion, of rage and sorrow, and a terrible, dawning comprehension. And in his eyes, Samantha saw the war being waged within him, the battle for his very soul. Then, slowly, painfully, he lifted his hand, not to grasp hers, but to press it flat against his chest over the heart that had once beat in time with her own, over the place where Rowan's amulet rested, glowing like a star against the darkness that sought to consume them both. Finish it, Finn gritted out, his voice raw and ragged, stripped of all arrogance and malice, stripped of everything but the love that had once bound them, the bond that even now, in this last extremity, could not be broken. Do what you must, sister, for both of us. Tears streaming down her face, Samantha nodded, and as she spoke the words of the spell that would end this once and for all, that would sever the last remnants of the evil from this world and from her brother's soul, she felt something break open inside her, a dam bursting to release a flood of grief and love, and a fierce, unshakable resolve. She had come to this place to save him, and so she would. Even if the cost was the part of her own soul that would forever belong to the boy he had been, the bond they had shared. Even if the cost was the piece of her heart that would never, ever heal. The spell burst from her in a nova of searing silver-white light, engulfing Finn, the crypt, the very fabric of reality itself. It was a light of ending and beginning, of destruction and rebirth. And as it washed over Samantha, she felt the darkness within her brother shatter like glass, felt the curse that had haunted their bloodline for generations dissolve like mist beneath the rising sun. In its wake, silence fell, deep and absolute. Samantha stood amidst the ruins of the crypt, her hair and clothes singed, her skin raw and blistered, but all she could see was Finn, crumpled at her feet like a broken doll like the child he had been, lost and alone and afraid. Choking on a sob, Samantha fell to her knees beside him, gathering him into her arms as she had when they were small, 
when the nightmares had come and the monsters had seemed to lurk in every shadow. She cradled him against her chest, her tears falling like rain upon his upturned face. His eyes fluttered open, hazy and unfocused. But in their depths, she saw it. The light that had been eclipsed for so long, the goodness that had never truly died. Samantha, he whispered, his voice a thready rasp. You? You saved me. A laugh that was half a sob bubbled up in Samantha's throat. I had to, she said, pressing her forehead to his. You're my brother, Finn. My other half. I couldn't let the darkness take you. Not without a fight. A ghost of a smile touched Finn's bloodied lips. And what a fight it was. His hand found hers, weak but warm. And in that moment, Samantha felt the shattered pieces of her heart begin to knit back together, felt the wounds of the past start to heal. They had lost so much, she and Finn. Their parents, their innocence, the bond that had once seemed unbreakable. But in the end, love had proven stronger than curse or corruption, than even the darkest magic. In the end, they had found each other again, in the place where it all began. What happens now? Finn asked, his eyes drifting closed, his breath shallow but steady against her collarbone. Samantha looked up, past the shattered dome of the crypt, to the sky beyond. The blood moon was gone, and in its place the first pale fingers of dawn were stretching across the horizon, painting the world in shades of gold and rose and soft newborn blue. There is of hope, of redemption, of a future she had thought lost, but which now unfurled before her, like a path she had never dared to dream. Now, she said softly, holding her brother close, we live, we live.